The Prisoner's Dilemma is a standard example of a game analyzed in game theory that shows why two completely rational individuals might not cooperate, even if it appears that it is in their best interests to do so. It was originally framed by Merrill Flood and Melvin Drescher working at Rand in 1950. Albert W. Tucker formalized the game with prison sentence rewards and named it Prisoner's Dilemma, presenting it as follows. Two members of a criminal gang are arrested and imprisoned. Each prisoner is in solitary confinement with no means of communicating with the other. The prosecutors lack sufficient evidence to convict the pair on the principal charge. They hope to get both sentenced to a year in prison on a lesser charge. Simultaneously, the prosecutors offer each prisoner a bargain. Each prisoner is given the opportunity either to betray the other by testifying that the other committed the crime, or to cooperate with the other by remaining silent. The offer is, if A and B each betray the other, each of them serves two years in prison. If A betrays B but B remains silent, O will be set free and B will serve three years in prison. If A and B both remain silent, both of them will only serve one year in prison. It is implied that the prisoners will have no opportunity to reward or punish their partner other than the prison sentences they get, and that their decision will not affect their reputation in the future, because betraying a partner offers a greater reward than cooperating with him. All purely rational self-interested prisoners would betray the other. And so the only possible outcome for two purely rational prisoners is for them to betray each other. The interesting part of this result is that pursuing individual reward logically leads both of the prisoners to betray, when they would get a better reward if they both kept silent. In reality, humans display a systematic bias towards cooperative behavior in this and similar games much more so than predicted by simple models of rational, self-interested action. A model based on a different kind of rationality, where people forecast how the game would be played if they formed coalitions and then they maximize their forecasts, has been shown to make better predictions of the rate of cooperation in this and similar games given only the payoffs of the game. An extended, iterated version of the game also exists, where the classic game is played repeatedly between the same prisoners, and consequently, both prisoners continuously have an opportunity to penalize the other for previous decisions. If the number of times the game will be played is known to the players, then two classically rational players will betray each other repeatedly, for the same reasons as the single-shot variant. In an infinite or unknown length game there is no fixed optimum strategy, and prisoners' dilemma tournaments have been held to compete and test algorithms. The prisoners' dilemma game can be used as a model for many real-world situations involving cooperative behavior. In casual usage, the label, prisoners' dilemma, may be applied to situations not strictly matching the formal criteria of the classic or iterative games. For instance, those in which two entities could gain important benefits from cooperating or suffer from the failure to do so, but find it merely difficult or expensive, not necessarily impossible, to coordinate their activities to achieve cooperation. Strategy for the prisoner's dilemma. Both cannot communicate, they are separated in two individual rooms. The normal game is shown below. Here, regardless of what the other decides, each prisoner gets a higher reward by betraying the other. The reasoning involves an argument by dilemma. B will either cooperate or defect. If B cooperates, A should defect, because going free is better than serving one year. If B defects, A should also defect, because serving two years is better than serving three. So either way, A should defect. Parallel reasoning will show that B should defect. In traditional game theory, some very restrictive assumptions on prisoner behavior are made. It is assumed that both understand the nature of the game, and that despite being members of the same gang, they have no loyalty to each other and will have no opportunity for retribution or reward outside the game. Most importantly, a very narrow interpretation of rationality is applied in defining the decision-making strategies of the prisoners. 
Given these conditions and the payoffs above, prisoner A will betray prisoner B. The game is symmetric, so prisoner B should act the same way. Since both rationally decide to defect, each receives a lower reward than if both were to stay quiet. Traditional game theory results in both players being worse off than if each chose to lessen the sentence of his accomplice at the cost of spending more time in jail himself. Generalized form. The structure of the traditional prisoner's dilemma can be generalized from its original prisoner setting. Suppose that the two players are represented by the colors, red and blue, and that each player chooses to either cooperate or defect. If both players cooperate, they both receive the reward after cooperating. If both players defect, they both receive the punishment payoff P. If blue defects while red cooperates, then blue receives the temptation payoff D, while red receives the suckers payoff. Similarly, if blue cooperates while red defects, then blue receives the suckers payoff S, while red receives the temptation payoff D. This can be expressed in normal form, and to be a prisoner's dilemma game in the strong sense, the following condition must hold for the payoffs. T greater than R greater than P greater than S The payoff relationship R greater than P implies that mutual cooperation is superior to mutual defection, while the payoff relationships T greater than R and P greater than S imply that defection is the dominant strategy for both agents. That is, mutual defection is the only strong Nash equilibrium in the game. The dilemma then is that mutual cooperation yields a better outcome than mutual defection but it is not the rational outcome because from a self-interested perspective, the choice to cooperate at the individual level is irrational. Special case Donation game The donation game is a form of prisoner's dilemma in which cooperation corresponds to offering the other player a benefit be it a personal cost C with B greater than C. Defection means offering nothing. The payoff matrix is thus note that who are greater than T plus S greater than B C, which qualifies the donation game to be an iterated game. The donation game may be applied to markets. Suppose X grows oranges, Y grows apples. The marginal utility of an apple to the orange grower X is B, which is higher than the marginal utility of an orange, since X has a surplus of oranges and no apples. Similarly, for apple grow away, the marginal utility of an orange is B while the marginal utility of an apple is C. If X and Y contract to exchange an apple and an orange, and each fulfills their end of the deal, then each receive a payoff of BC. If one defects and does not deliver as promised, the defector will receive a payoff of B, while the cooperator will lose C. If both defect, then neither one gains or loses anything.